Hi Minions, this video is going to show you how to turn your PlayStation 4 Pro that is loud from this into this. Now, when I recorded the rest of this video, I hadn't yet done the replacement, so I wasn't sure if this was going to work, but as it turns out, spoiler alert, it does. So. I go through the whole process of replacing the fan, so you can follow along. Um, otherwise, hopefully just me being silly is good enough, but enjoy. Hello Minions, Wheezy here, and today I've got a bit of a different video for you. Uh, I am going to try and quiet down my PS4 Pro, and I'm going to bring you guys along and we're going to see if it works. <laughs> and if so, you guys will know how to do this. Um, so, for those of you who maybe don't have a PlayStation Pro, um, you may not care about this video, but it can be very loud. Uh, I read apparently the second generation PS4 Pro, um, and I may post up the model numbers with it. Um, are a bit quieter, but the original, okay, Modern Warfare, the original PS4 Pros um, are a bit loud when they're under load, uh, which isn't necessarily all the time. So first I'm just going to give you an example, and the reason I'm loading up Modern Warfare uh, right now is because it is the easiest offender to identify, and in fact makes the um, PlayStation sound like what is notoriously referred to as the jet engine. Um, and what is interesting about it is it seems to be just at the uh, player menu in Modern Warfare because from what I've read there's an uncapped frame rate on the menu versus in the actual game. And that's why it's working harder in the menu than it is in the actual game. Um, so if you see right now with the PlayStation on just the front menu, this is not what I'm, that is not the menu I'm talking about. If we can come over to the PlayStation um, and be a little bit quiet, you can hear what it's operating at. Which, I, I can't hear anything, it sounds silent right now, right? But when I load up, when I load up the mi multiplayer menu, uh, and it displays, and it loads in your character, come on, come on, come on, then this animation uh, is extremely taxing on the PlayStation 4 Pro, apparently. So this is running in 4K, obviously that's the... The, the point of the PS4 Pro versus the regular PlayStation, instead of 1080p HD, it's 4K HD. Um, but it usually doesn't take very long for it to spool up. So with that just sitting at that menu, the PlayStation is still pretty silent. But I think I can already hear it starting to spool up. You can hear it going now. Still getting louder. Not even entirely certain that that's at full tilt yet, but even over here now it's to the point where you can hear it. If any of you guys have probably watched my live streams, um, or even some of my uh, weapon videos, if I'm doing a commentary, you can hear that fucking jet engine running in the background, right? <laughs> and and like I said, this is just the easiest way to test it. It's actually less under load during the games usually. Um, and in fact, when I'm, I don't usually just sit here at the menu, if I back out of this menu, the PlayStation will almost immediately start to quiet down. Mm. 
So the jet engine is spooling down to land. Um, so Infinity Ward, fix your fucking menu. And uh, that's still just unacceptable. So that's a 4K uh, console, console built for 4K, under load, uh, and it sounds like a, a jet engine, way louder than my actual desktop PC. Um, although to be fair, that's a little bit older PC, but still. Um, so yeah, so what? Uh, so there's a couple things that you read online to do for that. Um, you can take the top shell off the PlayStation 4 and help blow out the dust. That that doesn't void the warranty. Um, it's designed to pop that shell off, and uh, that didn't help. I mean, it maybe 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 made it take it a light, slightly longer before it really spins up. You can hear it spinning up again because that's the menu on. Um, that wasn't enough. The other thing that some people suggest is just that the Sony's thermal paste job sucks butts, and so you just um, open up the PlayStation. That does void your warranty. Get in there, take off the heat sink, apply new thermal paste, reapply the heat sink, and then that will help fix the issue. Um, I did that, and that seemed to make it, um, again, take a little bit longer before it started to spool up. But that only lasted even a couple of weeks, and it would still get to jet level. It would just take slightly longer. Um, and after a couple of weeks, it seemed to be like back to where it was, or maybe I just got used to the new amount of time it takes, but as you can see, it's not very long. Um, so then the next step is aftermarket fan, and, uh, hopefully that's going to make it quieter. Like I said, this may not be an issue on the newer PS4 Pros. PS5 is about to come out, but this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to take my PlayStation 4 Pro apart and show you guys how it goes. I'm going to install an aftermarket fan, and we're going to see if that makes a difference. And if it does, then I can recommend this to you guys. And if it doesn't, then I just wasted, I don't know, 20 bucks or 30 bucks on a fan. So we'll find out. Uh, yeah, so let me get this set up and pull the PlayStation out, and uh, we'll break her open. Okay, so I have pulled my PS4 Pro out, and I got it here on my desk. Boom, boom. Um, I am going to be following, just so I don't stumble around looking for the screws and everything, following this ifixit.com guide for replacing the fan. Um, and in, it says you need a T8 Torx bit, uh, Phillips number zero screwdriver, or Phillips number one screwdriver. So if you guys don't have like a, uh, an electronics tool kit um, and some Torx screwdrivers and Torx is the uh, is the star bit and these are in fact let's see I don't know if it says on there that's the eight anyway maybe you can see that it's got uh, no you're not gonna be able to see that's not gonna focus anyway there's a it's a star bit I'll try and put an image up there um, for uh, these screws this is actually a special set of Torx uh, security drivers that I have they have a little circle in the middle um, because some Torx bits uh, for electronics are, the manufacturers really don't want you to remove them, so you have to get special Torx bits. Otherwise, you can just use um, normal star Torx bits. Let's see if I can use this light to actually get it to focus. Can you see? No, no, gonna focus? No, you're not gonna focus. Cell phone cameras, am I right? Anyway, you can kind of see there. Torx bits. So, um, this is not a difficult process, uh, although if you're unfamiliar with electronics, this might make you a little bit nervous. I uh, actually went to school as an electrical engineer, so I've been building computers and, and taking electronics apart for decades. <laughs> so this doesn't make me nervous. If it makes you nervous, this does void your warranty, and you can break your PlayStation if you don't know what you're doing. So, um, so I'm going to walk you guys through this, but that's my disclaimer for don't, don't break your PlayStation. But it's, you follow along, it's not going to be that hard. So, um, first thing we're going to do, let's see if I can crank this down here. Hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll focus okay. It looks like it's focused pretty well. I wonder if I can get this up higher. I mean, I know I can. This tripod has longer legs. This is the fun part where you stay on the crutch. But don't worry, I'll just cut this all out of post. All right. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, apparently, is pull out the hard drive caddy. So, here in the back, it's 
got a little plastic cover. And uh, apparently we're going to take the hard drive out using the number zero screwdriver. I usually just set them over in my screwdriver holder center. This is the, what did I, I don't think I replaced this. So the PS4 Pro I think is a one terabyte hard drive. But if you want to replace the hard drive, it's as simple as that. You just swap it out in the caddy. Uh, the next step is, I'm gonna put this right side up and remove the top cover from the, let's see, grip it at the front, the two corners at the front, and pull upwards until the one click is heard. This part will make you nervous. I've opened this before, so it's even looser, but the first time you do it, it's really gonna stick on there. But just don't be too crazy and force it, but you gotta give it some force and it's gonna make some scary noises, but it's supposed to, it's supposed to come off, so. I got the cover off. This is the fan. This is what we're gonna be replacing. This is the fucking jet engine. Um, so after they both slide back, let's see, a T8 to remove the five screws from the rear device. So which one's my T8? That's my T8. So there's five screws back here that we are gonna remove. Let's see, making sure I'm following the diagram here. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Ugh, it's like fishing for screws here. And these screws, thankfully because Sony's Doing a better job of trying to help people clean their own electronics. These are not security bits that I'm wearing, no. Um, they've got little arrows indicating which screws you need to remove because this is, I believe, an actual legitimate part of your PS4 maintenance process. You will see when we get to the step where we remove the part that would have the warranty sticker. Those screws are longer than the others. Flip it over and leave three screws in the back panel. Now, this is where the three screws we're removing are here, 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 and here. Um, this screw, this screw, and this screw are typically covered by warranty stickers. And if you remove those, you void your warranty. I have removed those, so I avoided my warranty. However, if you've had your PlayStation a while and you don't want to try and warranty it back to Sony, and it sounds like a jet engine, this is uh, really the only choice you have. So. so it says remove the bottom cover the way is the top, grip it on both sides and pull it until it clicks. came off pretty easy, but this one's being a little stingy. There we go. Let's make you, let's make you a little nervous. Let me hold on there still. And slide it off. Slide it a little bit towards the back. All right. Still a little dusty. I have been using it since I did this. Okay, so now we're going to use it. Okay, so d this one does require the security screw. So these do have the security screw. So you will need the star bit that has the little hole in the middle to get these out. Uh, and it says there's 10, right, 11 10 millimeter screws. And then the antenna cables, so. All right, so lots of, lots of screws coming out here. I'm gonna move my bigger screws over here so that all my small screws can go in this little compartment. Don't want to lose screws when you're doing this stuff. So. One. Two. I want to kind of orient this the way that the, the picture is so I can make sure I don't 
falling wrong and removing all the right screws, not removing ones I don't have to, because I don't think I don't need to remove this screw. So that's why it's good to follow a set of instructions. These are Phillips screws, so we will be removing those as well. Just obviously not with our Torx driver. screwdriver. These screws are all also marked with little arrows. One. And it says there's 11 of these. Gonna be in a butthole. Eleven. All right. Use a spudger to disconnect the three amp antenna cables. So, spudger is essentially a non-conductive, flat something that you can use to pry off these little antennas. As long as you don't bend them, it's okay. And as long as it's not power on, you you know you don't you don't need a specialty tool to pop these little antenna cables off. Just be be gentle with them, and they just. As long as you don't use a lot of force and bend them, they'll snap back on. So I'm just going to pop them off. All right. What do we got here? Pull the white fan connector straight out of the mount. That's uh, this bad boy. And again, we don't want to use too much force here because we don't want to pull the wires out of the connector. Um, my light's probably getting the poison. Anyway, not perfect with the lighting setup. Pull out the five small blue low-profile cables connected to the metal plate. That's uh, these bad boys. So, I'm gonna just pull them out. This is so we're not tugging things loose. Two. This one looks like it's not. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. So one of these we don't have to remove, huh? Uh, pull, oh, and the large ribbon cable. So the five small ones and the one large one. Uh, this one, the reason it's pointed out separately is because it has this little black locking latch that you have to pull up slightly in order to unlock that cable. So make sure you don't just tug it out. Now we're gonna pull this bad boy up and we're gonna be careful not to actually see this antenna cable is actually tucked into these little metal tabs over here. So we are gonna untuck those and again we're not using force if something feels like it's tugging stop and use your eyes so we're gonna pull that out step 10 flip the console over to continue working on it wow I've got all this exposed stuff and you want me to just flip it over now okay brave careful these are chips that are important so don't just go slamming this thing around when you're working on the other side Pull on the power supply and set it on the console. That's you. It's hanging on to something here, so let's see if I've got uh, anything still stuck. No, not quite. 
And it is, the reason it says set it on the console is because it is still connected by this cable here. Uh, now it says grip the connector behind it and pull it straight out. So we're taking it out of the power supply like that. Carefully flip it back over. And we're gonna remove this plate, which is holding the heat sink onto the processor. And it says to use a number one. Who does number two work for? Uh, and this is how many screws? Two, four, six, eight screws. And these are the same four millimeter screws as the other ones we took out, so it doesn't really matter if you mix them up, although I tend to segment them just so that they roughly go back into the same components. Just a force of habit, but not required. says use a plastic opening tool to remove the metal plate and again the reason for that is with something metal like this little screwdriver you can scrape the motherboard and ruin some of the traces so if you're not going to use a plastic spudger be very careful with your board because if you scratch or destroy any of these little traces then you're it ain't gonna work right <laughs> All right, using number one to remove This is essentially, those of you that ever had a red ring of death on your Xbox 360, this looks pretty familiar. So this type of X brace is essentially what uh, puts pressure on the heat sink to keep it pressed up against the processor. And on the Xbox 360, the X bracket bending and flexing over time and letting the heat sink come loose from the processor was ultimately the primary cause of the red ring of death issues that were so systemic. So Microsoft's first solution to that was replacing those brackets with something that held the heat sink better. But. And then also finally, you know, in later models of the Xbox, upgrading the processor so that it didn't put off as much heat. All right, so I'm gonna pull that up. Uh, and now we're just taking off the motherboard, apparently. This isn't nerve-wracking at all. And again, we're not using force, and if something's catching, we're going to pause. There is obviously a cable still connected here. This is the other side of the power supply cable, and it's kind of caught underneath the console. So if I had unplugged that cable from the motherboard instead of the power supply, that probably would have been easier. But alas, here we are. I'm going to set this gently right here and make some room over here so I can put this down. This, again, all of the stuff you see on this board, all these integrated circuits and such, you want to be very careful, so don't, don't just plunk this thing around all willy-nilly. Um, actually, just real briefly while we have it here. That is, I believe... I'm not sure if that's the chip that holds both the CPU and the GPU for the PlayStation. I think they're both on there. Um, but that, you can see the old thermal paste on there, is the is the, the piece that we're trying to keep cool. And this is the copper part of the heat sink and the uh, paste that is holding it to that. So this is the thermal connection between the heat sink and the processor. So... Um, now we are going to remove two screws, number zero, from this metal plate, and that's what's holding the heat pipe in, it says. The heat pipe will be the copper pipe that helps transport heat away from the 
important components. So it's showing them here and here. Lift the metal plate straight up to remove it. Well, there's that big old heat sink right there. Uh, we're gonna also we're gonna also clean that out while I've got it out here. See all the dust in there. So that will help too. Just cleaning that out will help. This to get this level of dusting, you're really gonna have to open it up to do it. Um, so I've got some compressed air I'm going to use to clean that up. All right, so now we can use a Phillips Zero to remove the two screws on the fan, which are here and here. And pull up gently to remove it. So there's the funky, dusty old jet engine fan. So, I mean, it looks like it's in good condition. It's just, it just has to spin really fast to keep this thing cool. So we're gonna set this aside because this new fan, for whatever reason, doesn't work or something. We're gonna have to put this one back in, so. All right, so that's the disassembly process. So now what you gotta do is reassemble it in the opposite order. So I'm gonna get a couple more things and then we'll be right back to reassemble this. All right, so I'm back here, and a couple things that I grabbed were the fan, the new fan that I'm gonna need, uh, my new thermal paste, uh, my thermal, my super fancy thermal paste application tool, and some compressed air. So, just as a note, this fan came with both a tiny little screwdriver as well as a plastic spudger tool. I do not have one of these, and now since I bought this fan, I do. So even if this fan doesn't do shit, I got a spudger. Not worth that much money, 10 cents probably, but hey, there you go. So the first thing I'm gonna do, use this compressed air. If you haven't used compressed air before, hear that stuff in there? There's liquid in here, so you don't use compressed air upside down or you will spray a condensed liquid onto your stuff. You hold it right side up and it actually says that on the can. Hold can upright and pull trigger. Do that and we're gonna try and Basically dust some of this shit as we blow it everywhere. And I could get super crazy in here. Matter of fact, I might, I might grab a tissue real quick. I mean, since we've gone through all the effort of coming and opening this thing up, we might as well get as much dust off of this as we can. Because dust is the enemy. My friends, dust is the enemy. All right, the next thing we're gonna wanna get cleaned out here is, where did I, where did I move that heat sink to? I'm gonna hit it down under here. We're gonna try and clear out this heat sink. And I'm gonna do this away over here off camera just so you can, just so I don't spray it all over everything. Those of you who haven't used compressed air much, if you use a lot of it at once, it actually, because the pressure inside drops so quickly, the can gets really cold. Um, and there you can see, it's not perfect, but that's much, much better. So that's good enough for now. Are you hissing? It's like hissing at me, stop it. Uh, so that's good for that. Uh, not really much dust on the rest of my components, so we're gonna call that good for the compressed air dusting. Now we're just going to jump back into doing this backwards and install the fan. Um, oh, I didn't grab uh, Q-tips. That was another thing that I need to clean the old thermal paste off of here. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back with a couple of Q-tips and some acne pads. Ideally, where's the... Put it aside again. Ideally, you would use um, some kind of rubbing alcohol to get this off. I do not have any on hand. 
Um, that's how you would really get this super sparkly clean. That's why I grabbed the little cotton swab pads. But ideally you would use rubbing alcohol to do that. I would not encourage using water. The reason you use alcohol instead of water is because alcohol evaporates significantly faster than water. And you do not want water on your electrical components. And if it's not obvious to you why you don't want water on your electrical components, you probably should stop and not be doing this. So this is the die. We're going to be very careful. We're not going to use much force when we're cleaning the die, uh, i.e. the processor, because you can crack crack the processor die and that is a bad day for you. That is game over, friends. This is why there are warranty stickers on the consoles. So at your own at your own peril. Now I'm not going to go too crazy cleaning it up on the sides of this thing. We want a nice clean top surface. And like I said, if you use rubbing alcohol, you will get a real proper mirror shine, but we did actually pretty good there, so you'll see. Right? That's that's a mirror finish on that processor die. I'm holding that little clamp underneath there and I lost it. We're gonna clean this up, this copper up as well. Same kind of deal going for as close to a mirror shine on that as we can get and also making sure with these cheap cotton swabs we're not leaving cotton behind. Alright. So now we've got a clean contact surface on both sides. So I had, when I, I told you I did this before, where I already replaced the um, thermal paste and I used this uh, Arctic Silver Ceramic 2 uh, to do that. And uh, it's a good paste, um, but I figured since I'm going ahead and putting in the money to get a new fan, I might as well also put in the money to get a new thermal paste. And so I got the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste, which I've heard about before, but also looked at the reviews and stuff. And this seems to be regarded as a really good thermal paste. Arctic Silver you know, who makes the ceramic. Arctic Silver is also an extremely good thermal paste, so. So don't let that dissuade you. So what we're gonna do here, is put a couple little dots. Uh, this probably, let's see. Oh, there we go. Put a couple little dots in here. There are different techniques for this. Uh, but fundamentally, what we want is a nice, even coating of thermal paste without it being too thick, but with it covering the entire surface. I use, this is actually the back of like a notebook. I just cut a square out of the back of an old lined paper notebook. A business card or something like that would work well. You want some non-conductive but relatively firm piece of paper to spread this. Um, you don't want something hard and you want to be very gentle, so... I'm gonna spread this around. That's definitely not enough. So I'm gonna add a little bit more here. You can do too much, but you can also do too little. So like I said, what you want is, come on, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to spooge out here. And you spooged out. This is probably going to be a little bit too much now, so we'll clean some of it off, but yeah, you want, this helps facilitate a good thermal connection between the heat sink and the processor die. And so you want it to be on there nice and even, but not too thick. And you want it to cover the entire surface of the die relatively evenly. And that is pretty much pretty much what you want it to look like right there. If you're saying to yourself, this guy looks like he's done this a couple of times. It's true. I have. But it's not crazy difficult. Let's see if I can get you a decent view of 
the even application of that thermal paste. Now you do not need to also put the thermal paste on the copper side because when you press them back together, this is going to create that thermal uh, join between the two. So remove it from both sides, but only apply it back to the actual processor die itself. Okay, so now we're going backwards on this. So we are going to install the fan. Now I didn't really look closely off camera. Trusted the Amazon description, but let's, where did I put that fan? Where did I stick you? There. Yeah, those look like the same form factor, don't they? So we'll see. For all I know, this could be the OEM manufacturer for this fan. <laughs> it could just literally be a replacement fan. Uh, what I heard from the reviews, and matter of fact, you can see, look at that. It says, I don't know if you can see it, it says Nidec there, and it says Nidec here. So let's see if they have the same, if they have the same model number. I'm going to be just, I'm going to be very discouraged. Let's see. The old one is the G95C12MS1AJ56J14, and this other, the new one is the G95C12MS1CJ56J14. So it's the difference between the S1AJ and the S1CJ. So hopefully C means, can you please be quiet? This one definitely feels heavier. I don't know what that means. Anyway, so we're gonna put this back out of our way. And this fan is gonna drop right back in here. Uh, this is, yeah, I guess this power cable, did it tuck? Did it tuck through? I'm not entirely sure. We'll, we'll figure it out. This is gonna have to plug into that board somewheres. So there are these little plastic nubs that this sits right on top of. So that is where we're gonna put that. And now it's time to put screws back in. So we have got our processor screws here. Uh, that is not them. It is these. So I didn't remember exactly which ones they were, but since I roughly segmented them in my little case here, it's easier for me to locate which ones go where, if you've got a shitty memory like I do. All right. Well now, so that's game over. Fans installed. That is what we were going for. I, that, this pressurized air is still hissing. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's irritating the shit out of me. Okay, so before we put our motherboard back on here, now that we've applied the thermal paste first, we need to make sure that we reapply these heat pipe screws. Don't want to miss that step. So there are those two silver heat pipe screws we removed now that we've got the fan reassembled. So we are gonna put those back into place here. And now that we've got that done, and we've got the thermal paste applied to our motherboard, to our processor, we are going to put this in here. So another thing to note, make sure your fan cable's out here and we don't want to catch our antenna cables either. So we're gonna put the motherboard back in. Um, we're gonna start back here with the ports. They have to slide underneath, if I hold the board the right way. They gotta slide underneath at the back and then the rest of the board lays into place, but also make sure this power supply cable here tucks into that little rectangular hole so we can reconnect the power supply. So we got it tucked in at the back. We're gonna make sure we get these antenna cables out of the way so they don't get pinned down and set it down on the guide holes. So we've got our three antenna cables. All right, wanna make sure those aren't, aren't trapped. Our six ribbon cables and our fan cable, okay? Now that we've got that, we can put this back on there. Uh, 
Before we reapply this bracket with the tabs down, um, you can apply a little bit of bend towards, towards the nub that sticks out so that that puts a little bit more pressure um, to hold the die to the heatsink, but you don't want to go too far. You don't want to put much of a bend in there. Otherwise, when you tighten it down, it can crack the processor die. So we want to maybe give it a little bit of a flex so that it holds better, but we don't want to crack the die. So keep that in mind. And when I'm screwing this back in, I don't want to tighten them all the way until they're all in place since this is applying pressure uni uniformly across the processor. We want to not tighten them all down until all four are in place and we want to put them in a crisscross pattern which will help ensure that the uh, pressure is delivered more evenly across the processor die. That thread is being a little grumpy. We're all right. Numero quattro. And so since this is the last one, I'll go ahead and tighten it all the way down. So I'm wandering off the camera here. And then crisscross. Until it's tight. And again, we're not going to go crazy on the tightness here, just basically until it stops us. So now we've got that in place, nice and sturdy. So, doo -doo 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 -doo. so now we're going to put this plate back on. And it has eight screws here. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Come on, Tiny. Yeah. Whoa, where, uh oh. Oh, thank goodness it fell all the way through. That could have been no fun. And eight. All right, metal plates back in place. So now we are going to reinsert. We're going to carefully flip this bad boy over. And we're going to reinsert the power supply. So we're going to hook it back into its connector here. And make sure, again, we're not going to force this. We're going to make sure it drops right in where it's supposed to be without any resistance. And if we get resistance, we're just going to pick it up and line it back up and do it again. All right. Flip her back over here. And now we are going to put this plate back on. Again, we're not going to trap our cables, our antenna cables, or a power supply, or a, sorry, fan cable. So we've got them all free and clear. Good, good, good. Now it's time to hook it all back up. So we're going to plug the fan cable in. Put these antenna back in their position, carefully snapping them back into place. Again, no force. You should just easily snap back into place. If not, move it and realign it until, it's, until it just snaps easily into place. Lifting up the black tab for the big ribbon cable, snapping it back into place, and then these other ones just slide right in. Tab 
there. Now those are all back in place. Okay. Alright, so now, I got a little lost in the pictures. So now we're gonna reapply all the screws to this metal plate to hold everything in place. 11 black screws and I believe 11 torque screws. Two. Three. Four. Let's see, two up here. Five, six, and then the last five down here. One, two. Lost another one. Don't want to lose these screws down the engine block. Might be a fun time trying to fish them back out. Four. I can chase down this last one. Alright, five. Now we're going to do the torque screws. 11 of them as well. Oh, man, I'm getting fumbly here at the end, huh? One. Two. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Come on. And eleven. All right. Now that's back in place. So now we put the bottom cover back on, which we are at the bottom right now. So this is going to slide forward from the back like this and then snap down. Oof. Nope. I get that backwards. Yeah. So it's gonna slide from the front and then snap in place in the back. Good, good, good. Carefully flip her over again. And put this bad boy into place. These are long O screws, these are torque screws. I'm a little curious what this moon foil is intended for. It's 
some kind of, I don't know, it's not like a significant heat sink necessarily. Does it just kind of help dissipate heat across here? They must have found out in research that heat carried across here. I'm not sure. Tiny little heat reflector for the, for the power supply, perhaps. All right. So we got the three back screws and... So is that what we're going to reapply here? Did we already... so technically, I probably should have reapplied those back screws before this, for according to doing the steps backwards, but not going to cause a problem. So we're going to reapply the warranty screws. I'm going to very carefully flip this back over just to make it easier to reach. And we're going to put the three warranty screws back in place. Well, two of them are warranty screws. One of the screws you can actually get to without removing the stickers, I believe. All right. Those are in place. Now we can put the top back on. I think it slides from the back. Nope, that's the, the back. This is the back. Slides from the back. Snaps in the front. All right. Pretty sure it's good all the way around. Good, good, good. Now we are going to put that hard drive back in there. This slides right back in. One screw back in place there. And then that little plastic cover that I totally didn't misplace. Over here. And that's just gonna do 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 do. Snap right back into place, and we are fully reassembled. Oh, let's go ahead and turn around there so you can see. PlayStation! All right, so I'm gonna clean my station up, get this thing hooked back up, fire it back up, and we are gonna see A, did I destroy my PlayStation? Relatively confident I didn't. B, is this fan any better than the old one? So let me get that hooked back up. Okay, so we've got it hooked back up. And now it is moment of truth time. So we're gonna fire it up. Beep. Switch the input and monitor here. Nope, don't do that. Here we go. If I have the right audio input selected, let's see. It's got a PlayStation logo, so that's something. I'm so used to it not having to do the full boot sequence because uh, I just put it to sleep instead of powering it off, but when you unplug it, you gotta power it all the way off. All right, that's a good sign. So, we are in the dashboard. PlayStation, not breathing hard yet, but we wouldn't expect it to be, right? So let's load up Warzone. Well, not Warzone. Let's load up a menu, because that's apparently the most taxing thing that Call of Duty can do, is draw the frickin' menu. Is this exciting? Is this... Is this fun? Is this fun entertainment? I think it is. You're entertained. Aren't you? So entertained. That wasn't creepy. Connected to online services. My modem's... My modem's connected. This... All right. Draw this frickin' menu, bro. 
I feel like I feel like this is painfully slow. Is it painfully slow for you too? Good. Good advertising me. Cool. All right. Drawing my character. My character, by the way. You know, not to be confused with, but definitely supposed to look like Ripley from Alien. Got it with like the. There, I forget what they call it, but basically like the alien pack. It's got like, yeah. I'm a nerd. I just put money on it because it was like, <gasps> Charlie looking like Ripley. Oh my god. Um. It's the point now where I'm getting a little concerned. Hold on. Well, it feels like air's moving. Hold on. Do I hear... Is that the hard drive platters I hear spinning, or is that the fan? Sounds like a fan. Feels like air's moving. Yeah, I can feel air moving out the back. This is me being incredulous. How long did it take last time? How long did it take last time? I'm sorry, I put my hand right in front of the camera. You're going to think that was a time cut. It was not a time <laughs> cut. Dude, I can't even hear the fan. Hold on. I mean, I think I can, but it kind of just sounds like static. Matter of fact, I can't tell the difference between that and normal hard drive seeking noise. It sounds like a fan. Yeah, like I said, I can feel... I can feel air moving out the back, and it wouldn't be doing that if there was... That was the disk drive. <laughs> the disk drive just did a read. That startled me because it was loud. Did that just work? Do I have a quiet PS4 Pro now? It took it took way less time than this last time, right? For it to spin up. Well, <laughs> this may end up being a glowing endorsement of this aftermarket fan that is only different in model number by one letter. Apparently the difference between A and C is, can you please shut the fuck up? Because, make me a liar. Heat up. Oh, I hear it. I hear the fan. I hear the fan spinning up. Wait, let's see. Oh, I hear it spinning up. It's still really quiet, though. Here, I'll sh Well, you may have noticed I got a little hot in here, so I turned on an actual fan. That's probably interfering with our results. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, I can hear it now. Definitely took longer, but now I hear it. It's not jet engine level yet. Let's wait and see. We're still at the menu. We're still at the impossible to draw menu. At 4K. Yeah, we're at 4K. Now I'm, now I'm gonna have to check that we're at 4K, but if I exit out of this, then it's gonna like Stop drawing. I've just got. I got to check the resolution just to be sure. There's no reason it would have changed, although I just took the whole thing apart. But four K, twenty one sixty p. I can hear the fan now, so I know it's working, and it's a little bit louder, so it did spin up to dissipate heat. Let's feel, let's feel how much heat it's moving now. Ooh, yeah, there's definitely more heat coming out the back there. But you heard it before, it was, it spun up to like full speed, super fast.
You know, I think we, I think we may have done it. <laughs> I'm, I am, did I say incredulous? Because I'm incredulous. I'm like, this is taking way too long. I feel like versus what it was before, it should be mission accomplished. But I am in awe. I've been listening to this thing scream at me for like a year. Wake up. Are you awake? This is the evil menu. It's the evil menu. Are you wakeies? Can I hear it spinning up more? No, sounds exactly the same. Okay. Well. <laughs> We're going to call that a resounding success. So now i got to pick up the box. Got this from Amazon. The Quetter, Quetterly Replacement J... I'll post links and stuff for this stuff. J56J14KSB1012H fan. Chinese shit and stuff like that. Is this the thumbnail? No, it's boring. Um, I'm amazed. I hear the fan spinning. You may not. You did before. Is it getting louder? Or is that just the music? Nope, not really. All right. <laughs> so, things that we did change. Isolating variables. I did use a new... Heat the thermal compound. I did use the Noctua thermal compound. I seriously doubt that that thermal compound is so much better than the Arctic Silver that it caused the fan to not be working so hard. Different model fan, very slightly same original manufacturer, different model, C model instead of A model, in whatever all those numbers were in letters. But it just sounds quieter. It's had plenty of time to heat up now. We're I'm at like nine minutes on this part of the video. And it heated, it was in, it's in like, it's instant before, right? Like 30 seconds. And this is the hardest part of the game. Actually, here, let's exit out the menu. And let's see if the already quiet fan goes back to being super, super quiet to where I can't even hear it. Let's see. I can feel the heat coming out. And it's going back down to silent. So now normal operation is completely silent. And high powered operation is mostly silent. And it's definitely moving air because I can feel heat coming out of there. So I, I put the menu back on. Let's see how long it'll take to spin back up. It should spin back up like immediately because it's had enough time to warm up. Not yet. <laughs> smelling, smelling for burning electronics. No, doesn't smell like burning electronics and I'm electrical engineering. I've smelled burning electronics in my day. Here, yeah, spin it up. Definitely spinning back up. I think that's about as loud as it gets. I think that's it spun full back up. Well, I'm impressed. That was worth what I spent that money on. What, and it's, it took me like three weeks to do this replacement, so I bought it a while ago. So I don't even remember exactly what it cost. I don't care what it costs. That's amazing. Oh, wait. I can hear it. It's getting a little bit louder. Hold on. Hold on. It's definitely louder. Not louder than it was before, but that's like... It's like max loudness. 
sounds like right now. Can you hear it now? Can you hear it over the sound of the stain on my chair? Is that better? I think that's as loud as it's gonna get. I'm friggin' impressed. If you have a loud PS4 Pro, do what I just fucking did. <laughs> just fucking do it. Uh, uh, I mean, even if you're getting a PS5, if you're not. If you're gonna get rid of a PS4 Pro, do this just so the next person doesn't suffer. Oh my God, I'm still at the menu. I can't. I can't believe it. Okay, I'm gonna end this video because this has gone on way too long. I'm just can't. I'm just like waiting for it to just be like, okay, now turn it up to turbo. Still nothing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to exit the menu. And it's going to go back to silent, isn't it? I can already hear it winding down. And now I can't hear it at all. Get this freaking fan if your PS4 Pro is loud. Jeebus! Bye.